first Dr. Terzitz. With or without a... With. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Alexandra Tezic from the Geographical Institute of Serbian Academy of Science. And uh, now we are skipping uh, hard political themes and going more into nice heritage, cultural aspects of uh, Sultan's Trail, actually, and our research that was done within the network, academic network. I, will, um, I have to put my... Is it okay? Yeah, okay. Is the tension for Ottoman heritage in southeastern Europe a viable subject to, for tourism? Of course it is. And uh, we heard a lot of uh, presentations about the region, about the politics, about the contestants, uh, ethnic uh, problems we experienced in the Balkans and so on uh, in the recent uh, history. And this goes beyond. Uh, problems that we had with the region, and it uh, mostly starts with the uh, Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, and later on with Ottomans, who ruled the region for over 500 years. So we yesterday went to nice sightseeing of uh, Harlem municipality through the riv uh, river Sparne and so on, and we heard a lot about 80 years war with Spanish, which had emotional aspect for the locals. And here we have 500 years of Ottoman suppression in the Balkans of uh, mostly Slavic, Orthodox, Christian people. And um, in terms of heritage, the Ottomans came uh, really um, fast after the establishment of nation states in the uh, medieval times in the Balkans. Uh, and, uh, oh, <laughs> falling apart. Okay, sorry. And Ottoman heritage is nowadays uh, considered a uh, contested heritage in Europe in general, and uh, because of its uh, large presence in the Balkans, it is most contested in this area. Uh, it is uh, also, a uh, region itself is full of splendid examples of often heritage, uh, tangible, intangible heritage, uh, lots of implemented international cultures. And um, for tourists, it is important, for, uh, and actually it is excluded for the narratives. It is excluded to, uh, from official tourism offer in the region because of sensitivity of nations, because it consists of a part uh, of the nationalistic pro process, uh, building the national identity, were relying on releasing themselves from the Ottoman suppression. So the negative image of Ottomans exists through the region and is parts of historical identity narratives and so on, and also personal histories. Okay, sorry. Um, this is some uh, nice pictures from heritage sites from the upper part is uh, Bosnia, of course, because they uh, kept it in the most uh, preserved state. Uh, others are uh, mostly Serbia niche. Uh, uh, this is Trebinje on the, in the bottom, uh, gastronomy and so on. And uh, aimed uh, this uh, study we were done among students in uh, five countries uh, that pass through the route, that the route passes through, it was aimed in the identification of the overall perception regarding Ottoman heritage and uh, to examine what are true potentials of the development of this particular cultural route. So we included uh, five countries and we used this academic network to uh, reach to the professors and their students because this was the most easiest way to, to get uh, a sample in relatively uh, fast way and this all was done during COVID. So this was the only way to do some research. Uh, we did actually very well. We had uh, 627 students, uh, 
mostly undergraduate uh, distribution of countries you can see. Large, uh, uh, the most uh, representative samples were in uh, Bulgaria, Serbia, and North Macedonia. We had uh, smaller samples in hun Hungary and uh, in Croatia. Uh, these were samples slightly under 100 uh, students. And we did a st different statistical analysis to show the differences, to show the similarities, to show general perception. Uh, the types of the Ottoman heritage that exists in Europe, Southeastern Europe in more particular, the Balkan region, are mostly considered to be a tangible, materialized heritage. Fortresses, uh, bridges, oriental houses, vernacular architecture, mosques, and so on. And there are physical evidence of this. There are lots of them in the region. Uh, less, a little bit less memorial places because lots of uh, battles were happening in the region. Uh, lots of historical figures were uh, in, uh, uh, remained really important for this whole uh, history of Europe because lot, this was, you know, war background, war to, uh, warfare um, playground for the for the Ottomans to expand towards the Europe and. Um, other aspects, of course, include uh, lots of uh, intangible remains in, uh, seen in languages, music, uh, legends, uh, literature, gastronomy, of course, and so on and so on. Uh, these are some more uh, recognizable aspects when you think uh, of Ottoman culture, and these all are uh, in uh, the Balkans. If, uh, this, uh, on, on, you see this, uh, this is in Hungary, Memorial Park that was recently established, a uh, Memorial Park of uh, Hungarian-Turkish friendship. Uh, this is also was a quite contested issue because at uh, the time it was built, it contained only uh, Sultan Suleiman's head. And there was a, young, uh, a large public dispute on that, why to present, because his heart is actually remained there, he died there. And uh, there is a large public dispute on this, so they had to include also, this is a Croatian uh, knight who was fighting there, Mikos, and uh, they had to include him himself. So these kind of issues are always appearing when you try to uh, promote something that is Ottoman or, or um, foreign to this region that has really deep wounds, wounds on the issue. So we started, okay, we had a large uh, gap in uh, time from this period, so it's not so uh, emotional like Yugoslav wars or something like that. It has a little bit more time to recuperate from the issue. And um, so we tried to test what uh, local population foreseen in this small segment of educated young people. They are not representative of the whole population, but they can give you insight what's happening in the population. And if you regard population as whole, this is something that should be only worse, more negative. So we, we try to see it like that. And what we saw that different, uh, we placed several uh, most popular, how to say, mostly known uh, heritage sites and see how people from different country recognize it as being Ottoman, Turkish, or however they, they say it. And there is quite, <laughs> you see, the, the lines are just uh, different and uh, lots of uh, these heritage sites that are relatively closely to them and most of people have visited when they come in the region uh, are really diverse except for coffee, which is highly recognized and of Ottoman origins. origin. And I, this is uh, frequently said Turkish coffee in the Balkans, but now it's not, uh, not popular to say. You just say uh, Serbian coffee or Bulgarian coffee or Greek coffee or whatever, but it, in genuine, it is of Turkish origin. So, <laughs> so what are the overall personal association among people for Ottoman heritage. Uh, it is a legacy of Oriental culture, which is good. And then it's a, a legacy of multicultural and ethnic identities, also perceived like positive aspect. 
religion, okay. And then you have one third of seeing it, terror, special order where others were suppressed and so on, legacy of war and so on. So in most positive aspects currently are seen as something when it comes to tourism, a uh, good perception of, uh, of capitalizing of such heritage in the Balkan region. Uh, it is uh, actually, we also examined how this Ottoman heritage is seen uh, among uh, different aspects of the regional. So if you see it as a European heritage, if you consider Southeastern Europe a Europe, and as you see it as a Balkan heritage, or if you see it uh, part of your national identity. And mostly, when you go to countries, mostly they see it as a Balkan heritage common heritage in the Balkans, L far less uh, as European heritage. And there is also differences in different nations and so on. But in general, the most uh, prevailing positive uh, reactions are uh, among uh, Croatians, Hungarians, who don't have such a long history of terror because they don't have so much heritage, their identity is not, uh, national identities are not uh, so much uh, in, um, how to say, um, interconnected to the Ottoman past like other countries. So uh, they were more positive in it. And uh, most negative stands were present among Bulgarians and Serbians. And uh, North Macedonians were more neutral, so to say. So here are also, they, there were, of course, differences in uh, professional aspects, differences on religious basis. Of course, Muslims were more pro positive towards the heritage that is of such origin and so on. So it was quite interesting to receive this kind of um, uh, differences present already. So, do you think that such heritages are valuable for visiting in your country? You see, it's less interesting. But if, uh, if you go to other countries, it is getting more interesting to you. So, so you're regarding it more of the other country, neighboring country, than yourself, because your uh, nationalistic mindset refuses to accept it. Uh, what are the potentials of the cultural route itself? So mostly people seem to be positive or uh, undecided. Is it publicly uh, acceptable? The name itself is a little bit problematic itself because it, uh, it's a Sultan's Trail synonym to uh, conquering the region because the Sultans came to conquer our nations, our, our people and so on. But it also has some imaginative positive aspect because of the popularity of this richness of the magic of the harem or so on in the popular series that was broadcasted recently and showing this uh, era in a slightly lighter color. So uh, um, I would not, don't have time to show everything so I will step further. Um, but we also examine the, what are the potentials and how people, what are there, what are the perspectives, and uh, we saw that uh, uh, the most positive aspect of the cultural youth development is the opportunity to combine clearly Ottoman heritage with other cultural and historical resources that are closely interlinked to this Ottoman period, but are of national cultural expressions. So uh, also there are a lot of available, uh, pro appropriately uh, handled, tangible Ottoman heritage present at the area, mostly neglected, and that needs to be uh, recuperated, revitalized, and utilized. So people in these countries are aware of this problem and they are willing to devote to this. Of course, there are interests from the foreign tourist markets and there is an economic opportunity seen in that. So uh, we he here see uh, different aspects that are the positive ones. The, the list of the, the last few is actually the weaknesses 
that there is no interest at the local authorities, government is not interested support like that, uh, less interest of domestic tourists in such uh, heritage sites and so on, and lack of public support that we expect because, of course, of nationalist attitudes. Uh, these are the obstacles. Um, the, uh, one third of survey participants said that there are obvious obstacles in the development that should be foreseen in this process of development. The lack of public support, negative connotation of Ottoman period to national history, strong nationalistic feelings, and these uh, questions were actually stated in the free form, so we extracted, uh, we didn't give them uh, opinions to, to just tack the, what we think that exists, that they gave their answers free form. So six, lack of infrastructure, need to focus national heritage promotion because there are lots of national heritage sites that are uh, still unpromoted, neglected and so on. There are no economical um, support for the cultural sector, so we had to rely on uh, European uh, funds and so on. So different problems appear and different solutions, of course. So uh, this is what we said, okay, uh, the Sultan Trail, the historical route, it is an ecological route, it is, has a variety of things that it covers. So we ask if it should be focused clearly on Ottoman history, Ottoman heritage, or it should include other things from the region. And 62% uh, said it should be focused on cultural interactions among different nations within former Ottoman Empire. So, uh, in the region, people are more willing or supporting when it comes to tourism promotion of the heritage, Ottoman heritage, as long as it is presented in a way that also says the story of the national history under suppression, not only to include narratives that focus on uh, expressing the way Ottoman Empire ruled, the, their, their cultural heritage did remain, but also what happened for the locals and how the locals nurtured the history and narratives of that period as well. Uh, of course, there is a lack of support on clearly focusing on Muslim religious sites uh, because this is, of course, Christian, Orthodox, traditional uh, patriarchal societies where the religion still plays important part of the tradition. And of compose, comprising both Muslim and Christian heritage sites is a solution to the problem that might appear in the process of choosing which sites you promote and, and develop in the process. So, uh, still, Ottoman heritage in Europe bears strong political connotations, be contested to heritage, contested and problems in public acceptance of narratives that are considered problematic for the people, problematic from the people who are governments and so on. There are also large investments of uh, foreign European, through European funding, through TICA investment funds who support uh, revitalization of uh, Islamic uh, heritage sites, uh, revitalization of um, fortresses that uh, are now presented like a heritage of Ottomans, of uh, uh, specific historical figures, and they play the level, this is Ottoman in Serbia, this is Ottoman in, and actually these heritage sites are usually uh, more, la more layered than clearly being one or the second. They are mostly also Roman places, Roman archaeological sites, also uh, medieval remains from different nation states, also uh, Byzantine cultural layers and so on and so on. So you go more deeply and it is uh, actually a mixture of different things in one place and it is really splendid and unique in Europe. So it should be presented that way. So this is something how people, travelers in 19th century saw some of the Ottoman heritage. This um, Alphonse de la Matane, about the skull tower. This is something that shows the whole terror from the local, it's built by, by, it is a near niche. And you can imagine how people from Balkan Sea, when you say Ottoman, 
you, they see it like this because these are the skulls of Serbian heroes fighting for liberation under Ottoman rulership. And this kind of stuff you can see in Bulgaria, in Greece, in uh, Albania. So that's why this is aspect that Serbian and the Balkan people wants to present. Apart from the splendidness and the cultural aspect the Ottoman Empire brought to the region. So that's my point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Terzic.